Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you again into the Inner Sanctum. Come in. Huh? Kind of dead, did you say? Well... Yes, but we have our grisly little amusements. For example, our museum has the only authentic copy of the Moaning Lisa. In music, we're very fond of Mendel Groan's overture to a Midsummer Night's Scream. As for the movies, what really rattled our bones was The Razor's Edge. <laughs> As the dentist said when the drill hit bottom and the patient screamed, you've got a nerve. <laughs> it begins at night, outside a railroad station. It's raining, and Anne Winslow has just missed the last train that would take her to the house she lives in a couple of miles outside the city. Taxi! 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 Kind of hard getting a taxi in the rain, miss. I know, but I've got to get one. I missed my train. Taxi! All taken. Want me to check your bag and... No, Porter, I've got to get home. Hey, there's one with his flag up. Stop of the light. If you run, maybe... Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, light, please don't change. Don't change. Oh. Hey, lady. Made it. I guess you didn't see me waving to you from the I sidewalk. I ain't taking passage. Well, you've got to. Uh, the light's changed. Yes, but listen, I... Uh... Shut up, you mother... You see, I missed my train and I live some way out. Not really very far, though. On the reservoir road. The reservoir road? I know. It's outside the city, but I'm willing to pay a little extra. And the flag on your meter was up, so okay, I... Okay, okay. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I guess I can relax now. And... What's the matter? There... There's someone else in the cab. He's a friend of mine. Don't bother him and he but won't if, if... bother you. If you already had a passenger... Why didn't you turn your meter down? Because he ain't paying for the ride. I was frightened. The man on the back seat of the cab with me didn't say anything or do anything, but I was frightened. His overcoat collar was turned up around his neck and his hat was pulled forward over his eyes. And I was frightened. <laughs> Driver? Yeah? I... I think you passed the reservoir road. I did. It, it was the road that turned off to the right just a little way back. I didn't notice it until after you'd passed it. Okay, I sit tight. <laughs> hey, what's eating you back there? I have to turn around, don't I? The, the man, he... When you stopped short, he slid over. He's leaning on me now. So what? He won't bite you. He's just tired. But I don't know him. Believe me, lady, if you did... You wouldn't be any happy. He leaned against my shoulder without speaking, without moving. His hat was still over his eyes and the upturned collar of his coat still around his neck. My shoulder began to hurt and the weight grew heavier. And somehow from the silent body beside me there came a feeling of cold. A deadly paralyzing cold. I straightened up and pushed him away. He fell the way a dead body falls. On his back, across the seat, and his hat fell off. And the collar of his coat parted. And I saw that his throat had been cut. <laughs> hey. Yes? What are you yelling about now? Uh, nothing. I, I fell asleep and had a nightmare. Well, stay awake. I don't like that kind of music. All right. I'll stay awake. This it? Yes, this is where I live. Kind of isolated, ain't it? How much is it? A couple of bucks. Here. Thanks. Good, good night? Yeah. The key. The light. Oh, he didn't know I knew it. He didn't know. The door. I forgot to lock it. Who, who is it? Me. 
Your little pal here. He wants to sit down. Yeah, this ought to be nice and comfortable for him. You can't... I did. You see, lady, he got kind of fond of you on the long ride together. He don't want to go back to the city with me. He wants to stay here with you. No. Yeah. He's a very headstrong fellow. I, I wouldn't care to argue with him. You can't leave him here. Hey, I better hurry. Looks like the rain's coming back. Take him with you. He don't want to go. Besides, you wouldn't send him into the storm, would you? In his condition? Good night, lady. No, no, come back. Come back. No. He's gone. And I'm alone except for... No, the phone. The phone. Of course. I'll phone the police and they'll take him away. Hello? 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 It's dead. The phone is dead. And I'm alone. And in the room I'm coming to, there's a man whose throat has been cut. And he and I are alone in this house. I won't look at him. If I turned my head, I could see him. But I won't. What? He's moving. He's moving out of the chair. There's a grace. I uh, would have come earlier, but... Morning, then. I must have been unconscious all night. I beg your pardon? Who are you? Manson, Detective Second Grade, County Police. From the police? Yes. Oh, but I couldn't reach you. Last night, the phone was dead. I tried... The lines were out all through this area. That's why Mrs. Blaine didn't get through to us till this morning. Mrs. Blaine? The old paralyzed woman down the road? Yeah, that's right. As soon as the telephone lines were working again, she phoned us. She was uh, worried about what she'd heard during the night. She heard something during the night? A woman screaming this from this house. (laughs) That was me. Well, you seem to be all right. Why did you scream? The dead man in the living room moved. The dead man in the living room? I see. Uh, Suppose we go take a look at him, huh? You don't believe me, do you? Well, it's not an easy story to believe, is it? But we don't have to argue about it. All we have to do is go into the living room. All right, come in. I feel sort of shaky. You see, I fainted when when he moved it. I've been on the floor all night. This is the uh, living room? Yes. I think I'll stay out here if you don't mind. I'd rather not look at him again. There's nothing to be afraid of now. A policeman's here. And it's daylight, and they'll take him away. Well, miss... You saw him? I guess you must have been dreaming. Dreaming? Mm Mm-hmm. Because, you see, there is no dead man in the living room. There's nobody there at all. Try uh, looking under the sofa next. Right. Oh, you weren't looking around for the corpse. Uh-huh. You were just hunting for that collar button you lost last spring. All right. Have it your own way. But if you happen to reach in under a hunk of furniture and your hand touches something cold and wet, that won't be a collar button for her. Well, let's get back to Anne Winslow, who was a nice girl, but who had corpses walk out on her. No dead man in the living room. But he must be there. I don't believe Now, he... look here, miss. He was in that chair in that... Now, miss, it was just a dream. Or maybe a shock you had of some kind. Don't call me miss. My name is Ann Winslow. That's a pretty name for a pretty girl. He was there. I took a a taxi in the city last night when I missed my train, and he was was on the back seat. And and when I pushed him, he fell over, and I saw saw that his throat had been cut. And when we got here, the taxi driver brought him into the living room and and went away and left him here with me. Well, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between what you dream and what really happened. Stop trying to be kind to me. He was here. If he was, he'd still be here. 
Corpses had a habit of staying with it. Oh, wait. There was there was blood on him. There'll be some on the chair. On the back, maybe. Or, or the seat cushion. Or... Well? Nothing. How'd you happen to miss the train last night? I was at a party. Did you get the taxi's license number? No. The driver's name or number? No, I... I was too frightened to think I... I... Would would you uh, recognize the driver if you saw him again? I'm not sure. It, it was dark and I... I might, no, but You're I... not giving me anything at all. There are thousands of cabs, thousands of drivers, and I've got nothing to go on. I'm sorry, Mr. Manson. Well, forget it. The drive out here wasn't bad, and I... I met someone nice. Thank you. I just wish I could be of more help. Well, uh, if anything comes up, don't be shy about yelling for me. It's my job. You... You don't think I'm crazy? Of course not. This this whole business, well, it was uh, just one of those things, huh? Well, I'd better get back to headquarters. Yes. You've been very patient. That's all right. So long. Goodbye. Just one of those things. One of what things? He, he was in that chair. No, it's all right now. There's nothing. Nobody in it. But I can't sit in it. Seat cushion's getting shabby. Maybe if I turn it over. <gasps> On the other side. Someone already had turned it over because it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a dream because it's blood. <laughs> Can I help you, miss? I noticed you've been standing out here in front of the terminal for quite a while. What? Oh, no, thanks, Porter. There's nothing you can do. I just... Well, you're the young lady who missed her train last night, aren't you? Yes, I... Of course. You're the porter who helped me. Plenty of taxis around now. I know, but I'm trying to find the one I had last night. You are? Yes, you see, I... Um, I left something in the cab. I thought if I could find the taxi again... Well, that's not easy. Well, uh, but taxis usually work in the same neighborhood all the time, don't they? I mean, they have their special stand and Well, it's... that's true, miss, but you didn't get your cab last night at a stand. It was cruising. Oh. You didn't happen to notice the license number, did you? No, miss, I didn't. Or recognize the driver? I didn't even see him. I'm beginning to wonder if I saw him. I beg your pardon? Nothing. I guess I'd better go. I don't want to miss my train again tonight. Goodbye. <laughs> Tonight, I locked the door. That's funny. I must have left, left the lights on. <gasps> Hello. You, the cab driver, what I are you doing? I heard do- you were looking for me, miss. You're the same? Yeah, yeah, I'm the cab driver who drove you out here last night. And a friend of mine. Hey, I notice he ain't around. No, Where he, is he? I don't know. I was awful fond of him. I wouldn't like to think of him wandering around cold, maybe, and, uh... Why were you looking for me? The police didn't believe it. Policeman, huh? Didn't believe what? That there had ever been a corpse. It's too bad. So, no, no harm's been done and you haven't anything to worry about because the, the policeman probably thinks I'm crazy. Maybe he'll change his mind. Maybe one of these days you'll spot me and call a cop. Maybe the cop will start asking questions and I ain't good at answering questions. They won't. Once you put the finger on me, they will. I I won't do that. I'll forget the whole thing. Honestly, I will. Maybe. But will the cop you called? He thinks I'm crazy. You're a good-looking girl, miss. Which means the cop's going to be back. And if he comes back, he's going to find out you're not crazy. Because you're not crazy. Stay away from me. There was a corpse, and he had his throat cut, and he was in this room, and you saw him. And if a cop starts believing you, he'll look for that corpse, and he'll find it sooner or later, and then he'll ask me questions. So it'd be a lot better if you went away. I'll, I'll go. I'll do anything you said. Don't touch me. You'll go. But further than you think. Your hands! You're choking me again! It's the idea. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you. 
Hey, for a minute I thought maybe it was a cop. Hey, what's the matter? I, I don't like the way you're looking at me. Listen, listen, maybe, maybe things were loused up a little bit last night, but I'm cleaning it up. I'll... Hey, what's that in your hand? Now, now get away from me. Hey. Don't. I'll do anything. I'll... What's the matter? Uh, Mr. Manson. Yes. I thought you were... Who? I don't know. Let me help you out. I was so tired. You better get back to your house. No. It's cold. You have no coat. Come on. All right. But he's there. He? On the driver. I see. I'll take care of him. He doesn't... doesn't need care. He's dead. Did you? Somebody. He throwed it. Got it. Don't talk anymore. He started to strangle me. Uh, shh. Here's the house. How did you get here? My car. It's out in the road. I meant in time to... I was worried about you. Now watch the steps. I, I can't go through that door. He's lying across it. You've been very brave. Just step past him. There. Now, we will shut the door. No. Sit down. The chair here. Not the chair. It's the one. All right. The couch. Thank you. Now to get the body away from your door. Notify headquarters. Yes, of course. Where's your phone? In the hallway, right outside the living room door. Good. The phone's dead. The lines? They're all right. But the wire on this phone must have been cut. By the driver, maybe. I gotta get word to town now. Yes. Can you drive? No. That's too bad. Otherwise, you could hop into my car and. Look, I'll be gone only a little while. No, don't. A man was murdered. And his murderer must be found. We can't waste time. You're right, but please. I leave. You lock the door of this room behind me, see? Nobody can get at those windows. So with the door locked, you'll be perfectly safe. All right? All right. I'll lock it. And don't open it for anyone but me. Yes. Then I'll be seeing you. Lock the door. And don't open it for anyone but Mr. Manson. All right. And I'll be perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. <laughs> He told me not to open it for anyone but himself. Still, this isn't anyone. This is the phone. No, I'll, I'll let it ring. I won't leave this room. Let it ring. Let. <gasps> he said the phone was dead. Not the line, but only my phone. Mr. Manson said the wire had been cut, but if it really had been cut, it, it couldn't ring. And it is ringing. It's ringing. That means he, he was lying. And if he was lying, he wanted me locked in this room so I wouldn't tell anyone. It... Stopped. Hello? Hello? It, it stopped, but I... I can call. The police, I'll call. Calling somebody? <laughs> put the receiver back. I said put it back. But... That 
gun. Well. That's better. Living room, please. How come you tried the phone? It rang. Too bad I didn't rip the wire out as I should have. Careless of me, but too bad for you. What do you mean? I haven't much choice, have I? The driver's buried alongside of the corpse you met last night. Back in the woods. That's where I went. You're not a policeman. I'm a murderer. The corpse you saw last night was an old friend of mine who had ideas about sharing my profits in a little racket I run. I cut his throat and fixed things with that cab driver to take the body out into the country and bury him. You hopped his cab and the goon didn't have brains to get rid of you before you spotted the corpse. He got panicky and left it with you and told me about it. I rushed out here to sell you a bill of goods. You bought all right. Except the cab driver got scared when he spotted you watching for him at the railroad terminal. He decided to shut you up. I trailed him and realizing how easily he lost his head, I took care of him. And... And now, I'll have to take care of you. You can't go around killing... I've done all right so far. What's that? The door. You did call somebody before I got back. No. The door. I forgot to lock the door. I've got to get out. It's a state trooper. He won't get... Anybody else? Hey, you. Is he dead? Yeah. That's a doornail. He was a murderer. He was. That's why he started shooting without waiting to find out. <laughs> All I wanted was to tell him to move that car of his. It was blocking the road. <laughs> Quite a cut-up, Mr. Manson, wasn't he? And ambitious, too, wanted to leave his mark on somebody's throat. <laughs> he probably believed wholeheartedly in that proverb. Uh, you know the one. All work and no sleigh makes Jack a dull boy. Oh, that reminds me. I'd better hurry out and turn the motor off on that taxi. Oh, yes, it'll be still going. You can rely on that because nothing's sure but death and taxis. Sanctum has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>